So if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that I am a huge fan of Metroidvania games. Being my favorite video game genre, naturally I have played dozens of Metroidvania games over the years, some better and some worse. But today, I figured I would showcase what I feel are the top 10 Metroidvania games. Before we get started, just a couple of things. Number one, this is my personal opinion. This is not a collective voting on what is the or is not the best Metroidvania games. This is just what I feel are the best ones. It's, it's a personal preference. If you disagree, that's fine. That's what opinions are. They're different. And number two, we're going to limit this list to one game per franchise. Otherwise, let's be real, half of this list would just be Castlevania. So, without further ado, let's get started in my top 10 favorite Metroidvania games. <laughs> So I know little to nothing about the Toho franchise. Uh, I've played a little bit of like maybe like four or so games, and I mostly just know the series for its music. I absolutely adore the music in this franchise, and I recognize a couple of characters here and there. But yeah, I, it was not a series I was like ever super into. I enjoy what I did play of the Bullet Hell Madness, but that was it wasn't enough to really grab me. And then I played Toho Luna Nights, which is a Metroidvania official fan game, which is weird to say it's an official fan game. It is a fan game, but it's officially recognized as a Toho game, and it was, like, released and licensed. It's, it's interesting. Um, but, yeah, this is a Toho Metroidvania game, and it is really goddamn fun. In this game, you play as uh, Sayaka, who I believe is one of the main characters in Toho 5? 6? I don't know. Again, I really don't know the franchise that well. But you play as her, and she has the ability to both slow down and stop time completely, which makes for some really interesting and fluid gameplay. Combine that with the ability to, like, you know, um, use all sorts of different power-ups, and you can use them both uh, regularly and when you stop time, changing the effect a little bit. And it's a lot of fun. And one of the main uh, gimmicks of this game is the grazing mechanic, which if you've ever played a Toho game, you know that your hitbox is not your entire character sprite, but rather your heart. And while in this game it is the entire sprite, uh, in the original Toho games, uh, you can like just barely dodge an obstacle and that would be considered grazing. In this, grazing will allow you to restore health, MP, and other stuff. Uh, and it's a lot of fun, and I really like playing around with it. However, the only thing that really keeps this game from being any higher on this list, uh, well, there's two factors. Number one, it's difficulty. This game does not play around, and it kicks your ass a lot. It's not an easy game, and sometimes that's good, but other times it just got me so frustrated to the point of rage quitting, and then going back a few days later to finish it, but it's, it's a very frustrating game in certain points. And the other thing that's holding it back is its length. It's not a very long game. It's only like five levels. Um, and uh, it's it could benefit from being a little bit longer. I think there's a lot more they could have done. But it's fine as is, and I really enjoyed my time with it. Guacamelee is a game that was on my radar for a while, but I never really picked it up. Um, because I'm like, ah, I got other games I'll play, I'll get to this one eventually, it's not really a big priority, because, if I'm being honest, for the longest time, I thought it was a fighting game. I mean, with a title like Guacamelee, can you blame me? So imagine my surprise when I finally picked it up and found out it was a Metroidvania game. And not a, only a Metroidvania, a damn good one. And I really enjoyed my time playing through this game. However, I feel that Guacamelee 2 takes everything great about the first one and just enhances it, takes it to the next level. Guacamelee 2 is so much fun. I like the story better, the music, the atmosphere, the, the level designs, the, the new characters. Everything about it is just an improvement over the first one, which is saying a lot because the first one's so great. You play as a luchador named Juan who has to travel the multiverse to defeat this big, powerful luchador who's threatening to destroy it. And I think that's a really cool plot. Um, and the plot of the first game is great too, but this one really... Uh, tra traversing the multiverse was just so much fun, and I had a great time with this game. A lot of fun Easter eggs and references to other Metroidvania games in there, too, as well. Uh, it, it's a great time, and I definitely play both these games if you haven't, but Guacamelee 2 really takes the cake, in my opinion, as far as which one is better.
The Messenger is another game that was on my radar for a while, um, and I've always wanted to pick it up, and I'm like, okay, yeah, this seems like a really cool Ninja Gaiden type uh, 2D side-scroller. And I played it, and I enjoyed it, and it was a, it was an 8-bit Ninja Gaiden-esque 2D side-scroller, and uh, I had a good time with it. And, you know, the, the platforming was fun, the combat was uh, very uh, responsive, and it was just a really fun game to, to, to play around. The movement is great. However, I will never forget the excitement I felt when the second half of the game kicked in, and it transitioned from an 8-bit size scroller into a 16-bit Metroidvania. I was so not expecting this to be a Metroidvania game, and man, it's amazing. The music in this is so goddamn good. It is god-tier level music. Both uh, the 8-bit and 16-bit soundtracks um, are both incredibly stellar and, and so unique and original. Um, the writing is so funny. Every character in this is, is so humorous, and I, I love the banter between everybody. And it's it's just so, so fun to play. And the way that the uh, seamlessly transition from 8-bit to 16-bit in some in like the later half of the game is amazing. It's mind-blowing. It's unlike anything I've ever seen. It, it, it's honestly one of my favorite... Uh, gaming memories in recent in recent memory uh, was just that transition from 8-bit to 16-bit and then it becomes a Metroidvania game. Like, that was just so fucking cool to me. If you have not played The Messenger, oh my god, check it out. It's an awesome game. We all know I'm a huge Castlevania fan, but I also like things relating to Castlevania, such as its spiritual successor, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night. Now, I have an entire video reviewing this game, uh, giving my thoughts about it, uh, so you can watch that if you really want to know more about what I think, but the general synopsis uh, is that you play as Miriam, who is a Shardbinder, and she can kind of use that ability to capture uh, other enemies of powers. It, it's it, it's kind of like uh, the soul-stealing system in Aria of Sorrow. Um, and, you know, you traverse this big castle to find the other Shardbinder, Jeebel, who's kind of like your brother, sort of, not really. And, you know, a bunch of things ensues that I'm not going to spoil because I go in more in-depth into it in my review. And the gameplay is a lot of fun. It's fast-paced. It's great. It really feels like a Castlevania game. The visuals are beautiful. The music is incredible. And it, there, there's so much Easter eggs and content in this game. It is so much fun. Uh, and, you know, multiple playable characters, including a new one coming soon, who is a crossover character, apparently. We still don't know who it is, but it's really exciting. Bloodstained is amazing, and I'm very excited that they announced a sequel. Um, so, uh, I'm very excited for that as well. But yeah, Bloodstained Ritual of the Night is a fantastic Metroidvania game. I have a lot of fun playing it. Uh, it's a game that I constantly go back and replay and try to discover new things. Because it's one of those games that the more you play it, the more secrets you'll uncover and, and find. Uh, including an entirely 8-bit section, which is awesome. So, yeah, definitely check it out. So, I am a huge fan of the Shantae series. Uh, again, if you followed this channel for a while, this is no surprise. I absolutely adore this purple-haired, belly-dancing, transforming genie girl. She is awesome. I love her, and I love her games. However, the one game that I feel stands out above the rest is Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. This is the only game in the franchise where Shantae cannot use her animal transformation, since she is not a half-genie, but just a human in this game. However, it doesn't really take away from it, because instead you get Risky Boots Pirate Gear, which honestly, I think I enjoy more than the animal transformations. I have so much fun just running around and, and messing with these uh, abilities, and combine that with an amazing soundtrack and easily the best story the Shantae series has ever had, and easily the most threatening villain the Shantae series has ever had with the Pirate Master. It is an awesome game, and it is really no surprise that it is considered by many to be the best Shantae game, and I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, I think it's absolutely fantastic. Um, it's so fun to just go around these different islands and, and uncover more of the mystery of what's going on. And, you know, you're teaming up with Risky Boots, who is your arch enemy in the previous two games. And it's, it's great. Um, yeah, I absolutely love it. Definitely check it out if you haven't already. This game is fantastic. It would feel kind of weird doing a Metroidvania list without putting a Metroid game on there, right? <laughs> but there's so many to choose from. Zero Mission, Fusion, Samus Returns. There, there's so many great Metroid games out there. And if I made this list about a year ago, I probably would have given this spot to Super Metroid. Mm -hmm. But then came October 8th, 2021.
After 15 years of waiting, this game not only lived up to the hype, it exceeded it. This is hands down the best game in the franchise. From its absolutely amazingly fluid gameplay to the free roaming uh, aim that you were able to do in Samus Returns now enhanced and it honestly feels even better, to the sense of fear and tension and, well, <laughs> dread whenever you encountered an Emmy, to the amazing boss battles, including the return of fan favorite character Kraid, who has not been in a Metroid game since Zero Mission in 2002. Ah! Uh, ah, uh, it's awesome. It's amazing. It's so good. I love, love Metroid Dread. And, and I don't even get me started on Ravenbeak. One of the best villains the series has ever had. I honestly put him up there with the likes of Ridley and Dark Samus. Ravenbeak is awesome. The story is bigger and better than ever here, and I don't want to spoil too much because the game's still relatively new, but I can safely say I have no idea where the series is going after this. <laughs> and honestly, as a huge Ridley fan, Ridley's absence from this game didn't stop it from being the best one in the franchise. Which, don't worry, I'm sure we'll probably see it in Metroid Prime 4 whenever that comes out, but this game is something else. It, it really sets the bar for what a Metroid game can do, and I loved it every single moment of this. Ori in the Blind Forest is one of the most beautiful and breathtaking games I've ever seen. It has an amazing story, it has beautiful visuals, an awesome soundtrack, and all of this was made 10 times better in its sequel, Ori in the Will of the Wisps. This game takes everything that's great about the first one and just enhances it to a point where it's not even close. I don't know anyone who prefers Blind Forest over Will of the Wisps. It's that much better. The combat is so much better. The exploration is better. The power-ups are better. The villain is... I don't know. I, okay, I don't know. If, I don't know if I'd say I prefer Shriek as a better villain over Kuro, because Kuro's more sympathetic, but Shriek is still a cool villain regardless. This game also features, hands down, my favorite final battle in all of gaming. I love the final boss of this game so much. It's honestly just an amazing experience from start to finish, and it pulls at your heartstrings. This 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 is a sad game. <laughs> it, it it's not afraid to 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 give you that gut punch. It is it can get pretty upsetting and sad, but it it's beautiful. It's amazing, and I absolutely adore it. This really shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, but uh, Hollow Knight is my number three pick. Uh, I know a lot of people consider this to be one of, if not the greatest Metro of any games ever made, and I totally get that. Trust me, this game is fantastic. There's a reason why it's number three on this list. Hollow Knight is a game that I wasn't really sure I would like initially, because it reminded me a lot of Dark Souls, and I don't like Dark Souls. But I'm like, hey, you know what? It does have a Dark Souls feel, but it's a Metroidvania. I love those. I'll give it a shot. And I could not stop playing it. I couldn't put it down. I kept finding all these new abilities and upgrades and getting so invested in the lore to the point where now I, I know all of the Hollow Knight lore, and it, it goes so much deeper than just bugs. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's an amazing game with an amazing story and awesome boss battles, an absolutely killer soundtrack, and god damn it, I want a release date for Silk Song. <laughs> but yeah, Hollow Knight is just one of those games that really just keeps you coming back for more. There's always something new to find here, and there's always some Thing that draws you in, whether it's the, the visuals, the music, the atmosphere, the awesome boss battles, the, the lore. Hollow Knight just really has it all, and I totally understand why people consider this to be one of the best Metrovanias. It is absolutely fantastic. So, uh, if you've uh, followed me for a while, you possibly know this already, but I am a huge fan of Dust and Elizabeth. 
Um, it is an absolutely amazing game that for a while was my favorite game of all time, but was beaten by number one on this list because of reasons. Um, but I still think that Dust and Elysian Tale absolutely nails everything from character design to voice acting to uh, environments, level design, art style, uh, graphics, music, uh, story. Everything about this game is fantastic. I love it so much. You play as Dust, who wakes up with amnesia and a talking sword, and you meet this little flying creature known as Fidget, and you go on an adventure to find out uh, the history uh, of, of Dust's past and, and, and maybe do some good along the way and uncover a bigger overarching story uh, that's happening. And it is so good, so much fun. I This is a game that I have replayed a lot um, to just show my friends because I want to show everyone I know what an amazing game this is. And, you know, if you're my friend, uh, chances are I've showed you this game at some point. However, the reason why this is not number one is because, and while it is my second favorite game ever, and not my first anymore, is because I've realized I only ever replay this game if I'm showing it to a friend. And I have a great time doing it, but I don't really go back and replay it on my own. Unlike this next one. Number one on this list is a game that I have replayed well over 50 times to completion, by the way. It is hands down my favorite Metroidvania and my favorite video game ever made. Number one is Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I can go on for hours and hours talking about how much I love this game. From its music to its visual aesthetics to all the different items and upgrades and weapons and, and secrets and things that you, you didn't really know about until you play a game like a 15 time and you're like, oh wow, that's new. I never noticed that before. To like the item drops, the bosses, the enemy designs. The, everything about this game is fantastic and I, I love it to death. Um, I can recite the opening cutscene with Richter and Dracula by heart. I know that dialogue by heart. It is so cheesy and so corny, but I love it to death. And honestly, I don't even dislike the re uh, the remake voice, the, the PS4 or P PSP ports where they redid all the voice acting. I think the voice acting that is stellar. It's really good. And the dialogue is a lot is great as well. But the original game, it's corny, cheesy PS1 dialogue and voice acting. And honestly, it adds to the charm of the game. And honestly, I, I, I can't even begin to explain why I re enjoy replaying this game as much as I do. I have played it so many times. I have every version of this game, whether it be PS1, uh, PSP, PS4, uh, Xbox 360, uh, mobile phones. I even have the Sega Saturn version, despite not owning a Sega Saturn. I adore this game to death. And... I will constantly, constantly replay it over and over and over again because it is, it's just a game I never, ever get sick of. And there you have it. Those are my top 10 favorite Metroidvania games. Was your favorite Metroidvania on this list? If not, what is your favorite Metroidvania? Maybe it's a game I haven't played yet and you want me to play it. I would love to uh, be exposed to more Metroidvania games. So, if you like this video, leave a like to let me know. It appreciates a lot. Comment your favorite Metroidvania. Subscribe if you want to stick around for more videos from me. Um, hit the bell if you want to get notified for those videos, because I have to mention that, because YouTube is weird. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I'm probably going to replay Symphony of the Night for, like, the millionth time. So, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.